in this video, okay, I'm going, you know, to, you know, um, take a look at 2021, 2021, you know, February, March, simple two accounting written paper, okay? So you will have the question, the answer, okay? You may catch a screen or you may, okay? okay? And then you can know how to do it, okay? Okay, let's pick, let's go. Now for part A, it's about, uh, you know, the sales journal. So I would just take a look for the dates that, okay, include sales, I sales of goods, okay, day six, you know, and um, then uh, 20, and then uh, 26, okay. So these, okay, are all about sales, okay. So you can see in the answer on the right chalk corner, okay. It's all about sales, okay. So um, the most difficult part uh, lies on day six. As you can see, um, there is $40 deducted, okay, $40 deducted, okay. Because it talks about, okay, a subject, to the trade discounts, okay? So in that, for this trade discount, it's equal to 200 times 20%, okay? So that that's it, okay, for part A. Um, remember that, okay, um, this one, do not, okay, omit the sentence, okay? Don't forget, okay, you have to put down this sentence, okay, put it down, okay? Transfer to the sales account, okay? So for part B, for part B, okay, it's about the cash flow, the cash flow, okay? So I will mark down the steps for you and guide you to do it, okay? So step number one, step number one, okay, you must, okay, uh, start with, start with the balance brought down, okay, start with the balance brought down, okay, and when you, okay, um, and when you do it, okay, we will do it, uh, you know, um, on the dates that involve, you know, um, cash or bank, okay, so let's take a look, uh, we'll start with uh, two, okay, say for example, pay to rent with direct debit, pay to rent with direct debit, then we will do it rent and bank, okay? So, and then move on. Uh, day 9, okay? Day 9, so surplus, okay, we have to pay it by credit transfer. Okay, so we will have day 9, okay? Day 9, disposal, okay? Disposal. We have a transfer bank. And then we will move on um, to day 11, okay? Day 11, okay? Paid, okay? Paid uh, in cash. So we will put it here, paid in cash. Day 15 is cash sales, okay, that means, okay, um, you receive cash, right, but, re okay, this one is quite tricky, and some students do it wrong, okay, don't put it into the cash, don't put it into cash, okay, it's referred to the bank, at, at the so cash sales, okay, it's put into the bank, okay, uh, immediately, uh, this one you have to uh, be careful, um, and then for the next one, okay, we'll move on to day 21, okay, Paid with check, okay. Paid with check, but the you know um the amount the amount is one you know uh it's not one six zero okay it's not one six zero it's divided into one four eight and twelve okay so remember that okay you have to do it okay so one six zero so the one six zero we have it okay the one six zero we have it uh from part A so we ha you have to be careful okay and this time okay. We have to deduce the uh, you know discount. In part C, um, we have to prepare the ledger account and with the balances. So the answer, okay, I've put it uh, in the right uh, bottom corner for part C. Now, um, first of all, uh, we will start with uh, January first, okay, January first. Um, so indeed, uh, what you can do um, to help you to uh, do it quick, okay. So you can highlight all the you know all the transactions again okay, with this comma uh, with this customers including on date third and then uh date tenth uh, date eleven okay so these are uh, all you need okay these are all you need um so there are two things I would like to remind you first one okay for the purchases on January third uh, we have to deduce the discount okay so this one okay you can have it okay uh. 120 times uh 25 percent okay so you have to deduce the discount um also also for the return okay for this return uh so you can see here okay with this five dollars um and that um is equals to you know uh twenty dollars times five percent okay so that's how you get it okay that's how you get it okay um so be careful this one is the list price okay so you have to uh you know, for the list price, okay, you have to uh, deduct the trade discount in order to get the real, uh, you know, um, the real transition value. 
and then remember you have to do the balance carry down and also the you have to bring down the balances okay um that's it for part c now for part d um it's about the return on 10 okay the return on 10 is uh, return the goods okay return the goods to okay so this is the credit note okay credit note so right now we will move on to question two for question two, we have to prepare the income statement and also, you know, um, the asset section, okay, for the financial position only, okay? Only the asset section. Um, so I will do the income statement with you, okay, uh, together. So first of all, um, so we have the question in the left-hand side and the answer in the right-hand side. Um, first of all, we have the fee, right? So we can just copy it. Easy, easy. And then there are some items that you can copy directly, like the salaries, the salaries you can copy okay um for the electricity and advertising electricity advertising we can copy we can just the copy okay and then um also for the electricity eight thousand copy okay bank charges copy so all these okay can be copied so right now okay we will move on move on to those uh, expenses that need to uh, do adjustments and then for the rent and rate, um, I don't like um, this formula at all. Okay, I don't like it. Okay, so I will do it in an alternative rate. Um, so um, in this question, in this question, the rent and the rate. Okay, so they are separately. Okay, they're separately. So we will do it uh, one by one. First of all, for the rent, for the rent is sixteen thousand. So I will put it okay in the formula here. Okay, so sixteen thousand for the rent for the rent. Okay, and then we have to take a look the rates. Okay, so how to calculate the rates? So for the rates, um, is uh, okay six thousand for okay uh, from January to October. So I will put it down. I will put it down in the answer. Okay, sixteen thousand plus okay six thousand. Okay, for the rate for January to October only. So there's one more item we have to add. It's about the rent. Uh, sorry, it's about the rate. It's about the rate. Okay, from November. Okay, to December. Two months. Okay. So how to do it? Uh, how to do it? Uh, let's take a look. So for the annual, for the new one. Okay, it's six five. Okay, uh, seven five six zero. Oh. So we can deduce uh, okay two months rate. Okay, six five six zero oh, divided by twelve months. Okay, divided by twelve months. Divided by twelve months. And then we have to times two, okay? Times two, do you know, to grab the rates for November and December, okay? November and December. So, and then we can grab it, and the answer is 1260. Oh, 1260. Oh. So, okay, after you add up all these three figures, all these three figures, and then you will have the answer 23260. Oh, 23260. Oh. Okay, you may also refer it to the alternative rate to the alternative way uh, of doing the rates, okay? Um, so that's um, the okay, alternative method, okay? So like, okay, you know, like, okay, I use alternative method, okay? So you may refer it, okay? Uh, but I don't really like this one, okay? No, I don't like this one. So, and then we will go for um, the f number three. For number three, um, it talks about, okay, the straight line method, okay? That means we can omit the provision for depreciation, but don't, do not, do not make sure of this 60,000 times 15 percent it would be wrong because because okay um uh you know um a thousand eight hundred okay will be disposal okay so when you do the depreciation you have to minus it okay you have to minus it so this one remember that okay so um this one is for the disposal so we have to deduce it it's for the depreciation and then next we have to compose the gain or loss okay the gain or loss um for this uh disposal okay so um, no entries have been made, okay? So you can remember that. So it's a tips, okay, or hint that we have to include the gain or loss on disposal. So when we do it, okay, we have to take a look at the netbook value, okay, and the proceed, okay, the netbook value and the proceed. So first of all, we have the proceed. Um, it's a thousand, the proceed, okay, this one. So we can okay, mark it down. So this one is the proceed. And then we have to compel, okay, take a look, the net book value, the net book value, okay, the net book value. Um, so uh, we can see that um, this one, 
is purchased for a uh, thousand and a hundred and okay uh 2018 2018 and then um is sold on february 2020 so um take a look uh, no depreciation is charged during the year of disposal that means okay we have to only do it for two years okay um that is okay um 2018 okay so we can mark it down 2018 and 2019 okay so we do not have to do depreciation for 2020 so um let's do this so um so we have to detail the net book value the net book value of that uh motor vehicle the net book value so we have to make a okay one h o o minus one h o o times fifteen percent times two years okay so and then you can grab okay the answer will be equal to one two six o okay so i okay so and then you can see um, there is a loss incurred. Okay, there's a loss incurred uh, for two six zero. Okay, for two six zero. Okay, uh, one more item to go. One more item. Okay, so we can see that there is a bad debt, right? Bad debt. So we have to written it off. Okay, so written off the bad debt. So one. Okay, this one. Okay. So you can just put it here. Okay. So that's all. So that's all, and then you can have the profits for the year. Okay. So this is um, how we do it uh, for question 2A. So right now for question 2B, rem remember that okay, we have to only do uh, for the asset part. Okay. So first of all, um, for, th okay, for the cost, for the cost of the, um, for the cost of the equipment, okay, is not one extra or remember that, not one extra or because, okay, um, so there is uh, 18, uh, sorry, uh, one, uh, one extra or okay? So one X O O is deduced. Remember that it's about the disposal, right? And also for the accumulated depreciation, okay, for the accumulated depreciation, okay, we have to deduce it, okay? We have to deduce the four, okay, uh, four five O, okay, uh, sorry, four uh, five four O. How to grab this here, okay? So um, so this one is the formula. So this one is in the is equal to five four O, right? Okay, five four O. So you have to deduce both a cost and accumulated depreciation okay when it incurs the disposal so uh, and then we can after that okay so i'm gonna train receivable okay you you cannot okay you cannot uh just copy it okay remember that there is a you know a bad depth okay bad depth so we have to deduce it okay and then for the for the other receivables i don't i don't like the term other receivables indeed it's about the prepayment okay so if you recall there is you know uh a prepaid rent a prepaid rent here okay so we have to deduce the prepaid rent indeed uh, uh, so when we do it okay we can mark it down okay it's about one six oh 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 the annual rent divided by 12 months okay and then times three months okay it's a quarter right so it's four thousand um or you may refer to here okay four thousand okay here four thousand okay so four thousand for quarter okay so this one for the other receivables um and that um, is a kind of prepayment. Okay, that's all for, okay, question two. Um, question three A, um, we have to explain uh, the use of suspend account, okay? The use of suspend account. So we may refer to the answer on the top right corner, okay? So for the suspend account, we will put it in the trial balance, okay, trial balance. To make the trial balance, okay, make it balance, okay? So if there is any imbalance in the trial balance, we will make use of the suspend account. So let's go to part B, okay? For part B, um, we have to prepare the general entries, okay? Um, we will go through it one by one. Um, the first one, a repair to the premises. So a repair to the premises, this is a kind of expenses uh, put in the profit and loss account, okay? But, on, but however, okay, it was put in the non-current asset account, okay? So this must be wrong, okay? This must be wrong. So we have to deduct it, okay? We have to deduct it, okay? No, this is not, okay? Not about uh, the non credit. We have to deduct it, and we have to add it up, okay? For the profit and loss, okay? For the profit and loss. So it's a kind of expenses. So let's take a look at uh, number two, number two. For number two, um, it's about the purchase of motor vehicle, okay? Um, the purchase of motor vehicle, okay, they have to do the credit, but not, okay, but not recorded, okay? 
in the accounting record. Okay, not in recorded in the accounting record. So we have to uh, do it. Okay, so this is a kind of omission. Okay, omission error. Omission. They have they haven't done anything. So we have to just okay put it back. Okay, put it back. Um, first of all, you have to debit uh, motor vehicles because it's about a non current asset increase, right? Uh, and then we have to do it okay because this is non current liability. Okay, we have to credit the liability. So um, it's quite straightforward for number two. So let's take a look at number three. Uh, number three um, is a kind of compensating error. So you may refer to your textbook, right? Compensating error. So we have to just um, deduce um, both uh, figures, okay? Deduce both, uh, you know, uh, purchasing figures and also the uh, sales figures. So um, let's take a look. For sales, okay, when we deduce it, okay, we will debit sale, right? For purchases, when we deduce it, we will credit purchases. Okay, we call it a compensating error. Okay, number four, uh, the returns that have not been recorded in the returns invoice account only, only. So that means uh, here, okay, so we would call this a uh, one side error. One side error. So we have to make use of the account suspense, okay? We have to make use of the account suspense. So let's take a look at the last one. For the last one, uh, the bank interest received adapted by the in the bank charges. Okay, the entries are uh, had been made correctly made in the bank account. Okay, so think about it. So this one is received, right? Received. It's a kind of income. Okay, it should be credit. However, however, they make it like an expenses. Okay, they make it like expenses with a debit. So this is an error. Okay. So what do we need to do? Okay, first of all, we have to cancel. Cancel the expenses. Cancel the expenses. And the second thing, we have to record the income. Record the income. So all these, okay, so and then we will type the suspense. Okay? So that's it uh, for part B. For part C, um, uh, I've, I've uh, you know, discussed the answer with you uh, before, right? Uh, so this one will be error three, error three, and this one will be error two. Okay, so we will move on to part D. Okay, so we have to complete the table here. Okay, to complete the table here. So the table in that uh in that part here will be about the gross profit and the profit for the year. Okay, so we will do this. Okay, uh, we will do this. Um, so let's take a look uh of it one by one. Okay, let's take a look of it one by one. So um when we when you do this kind of question, when you do this kind of question, okay. Make sure you refer, refer to the journal uh, you prepare, okay? Otherwise, okay, you have to think it again and again. So the tips would be refer to part B, okay? Refer to part B. So um, we will make use of the journal. We will make use of the journal to do it. So let's take a look at error one, okay? We have, first of all, we debit the p and L, right? Debit the p and L. That means um, this one would be about uh, deduct, deduct, okay? Deduct the profit, okay? Expenses here okay so that's the way we do it okay that's the way we do it we try to take a look okay take a look the error for number two okay nothing right number two nothing it's nothing related to p and l for number three it's a kind of compensating error okay so um so think about it um so nothing right nothing nothing so um number four number four you can see this is the sales return right sales return so for sales return okay so we must okay put it here right okay sales return here and this one would directly affect the net profit, right? For the last one, um, it's quite uh, a little bit complicated. Um, so income increased by 25, okay? Expenses dropped by 25. So the answer would be like this, okay? The answer would be like this. Uh, we'll do it again. Income increased by $25 and expenses deducted by uh, $25. So the profit has added up. So um, let's go to the part D, okay? So, um, it's so why the suspend why there is a suspend, okay? So that means okay, there are errors that not be found, okay? So straightforward and easy. For question four, we will just take a look part A, okay? Um, as part B C D is quite easy and straightforward. For part A, um, it consists of six marks, okay? We have to find out the gross margin, the trade receivable, and the current ratio. Um, so uh, you have to show the working for one mark and the answer for one mark. Um, so let's take a look gross margin, okay? Gross margin. Um, for the gross margin, um, the, the, the formula, okay, the formula would be we have to make use of the gross profit over the 
credit sales, okay, over the sales, okay, uh, over the sales. So that would be the answer. Um, for the second one, for the second one, for the trade receivable turnover. So um, what do we have? Okay, we would make use of the trade receivable, the trade receivable over sales, okay, over sales. Again, we have to over sales. That means one one four uh, four zero. For the last one, it's the most difficult one. Okay, it's about the current ratio. So the formula, okay, you may refer to your textbook. Um, the formula, okay, would be um, current asset over current liabilities. Um, for the current asset, so we will have um, these two. These two as the current asset and um, trade payables, of course. Um, trade payables is related to uh, current liabilities. For this one, uh, you may put an asterisk here. Okay, some students make it wrong. Okay? Some students regard that as current asset. No. This one is also regarded as current liabilities, okay? Current liabilities. So remember that, okay, bank overdrive is a kind of current liabilities. So these two, okay, so these two, okay, would be current liabilities. And then you can grab the answer. So I would say um, for um, question 4A, it's quite straightforward, uh, but you have to remember the formula. And also one thing I would like to mention is about the unit. Unit, okay? In your answer, you must give the correct unit okay to your answers okay otherwise okay marks will be deducted for the first one is percentage second one days the last one uh, for the current ratio is a kind of ratio okay ratio okay so we would do it like this okay we would do it like this so that's all for question 4a for question 5a um, we have to deduce the cost of inventory um, so there are several information um, given in a question for the gross margin, okay, the formula would be um, gross profit. Okay, you may uh, assume, uh, assume, uh, assume the video uh, over net sales. Okay, over net sales. That means you have to deduct the returns inward. Okay, if there are any returns inward. Okay, so you have to deduct it. Okay, so uh, and then you we have the purchase price. We have the carriage inwards. Okay, so these are all make up the, the cost. Okay, these are the cost of you know uh, inventory. Um, also, um, there is, you know, uh, this one at the 2020, okay, this is the closing inventory, closing, closing. So right now, okay, we have to calculate the answer, so you may have it, okay, in the right top corner. So we will, first of all, we have 70, okay, so we have to 70, that is, that's the purchase price, okay, so the purchase price was close to here. And then we will also have the carriage inwards, so it goes to here, okay. And then we have um, the closing inventory, okay. The closing inventory one three zero here, okay. So we then we can add it up, okay. We can add it up. Um, so bear in mind, um, there is no opening inventory in this um, in this question, okay. No opening inventory. So this is the key, okay. This is the key of doing this question, okay. So if there are uh, any uh, open inventories, okay, um, the calculation would be more and more complicated. Okay, so um, so that's all for part A. So um, we can see that um, for the, you know, uh, for this one, okay, uh, it's quite straightforward and there's uh, one mark only, okay, one mark only. Um, so um, so uh, some candidates uh, may find out, okay, this one, okay, is not used in part A. So that means, okay, for the gross profit margin, okay, we will make use in part B. So let's take a look. Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay. Um, for part B, um, it talks about okay, uh, Maria. Okay, they, uh, she does not have a full set of accounting records. Um, so there are sales on cash term. Okay. So these okay. So for these um, two, two months, eight months, two months. Okay, that means twelve months, right? So from these figures, from these figures. Um, so indeed, we have you know um, the total revenue, right? So we have the total revenue, okay, so this one, right, okay. So it's very, very easy, okay. So, and then, and then, uh, what's next uh, from these, okay? From these, and then we can make use of the gross profit, okay? We can make use of the gross profit. Then we can deduce the gross profit here, okay? So, um, so let me make it clear, okay? So this one is about, okay, 150,000, okay, times 40%. Then we can grab the gross profit. Okay, so next, um, let's take a look. Uh, number two. 
So this one, uh, so there is a thousand, uh, okay, uh, with the unit, uh, 14,000 units, and with carriage, okay? And this one, very tokus, okay, tokus, no record, okay? So this one, indeed, uh, no record, that means this one is the missing figures, okay? Missing figures. So the, the difficulty of the question lies on you whether you can find out, okay, the amount of drawings in this question. So what you need to do, okay, you may take a look the top right corner. So um, let's take a look. So uh, here, this one. So this one is the most difficult part of this question, okay? So uh, we, we will take a look how to find it out, okay, the most difficult part. So it works for two marks, okay? So I would uh, mark down the steps for you uh, one by one, okay? Make sure you understand the step, okay? So num uh, step number one, step number one, we have to find out the, you know, uh, the cashiers, okay? So step number two, we have to find out the gross profit. Step number three, so in this step, we will find out you know, the cost of good sales, so the cost of goods sold, or we can call it as sales, okay? So, and then for the closing inventory, for the closing inventory, we can grab it from part A, okay? So this is step number four, okay? Closing inventory, grab it from part A. Um, step five, okay, step five, okay? So step five, this one, we can grab it from number two, uh, point number two, right? Point number two talks about the purchase and the carriage inwards. So right now we would have the figures, 100, HOO, here, okay? 100 XOO. And also we have the 9360. 9360 at the closing inventory. So uh, so this one, 1440 would be uh, the missing figures, okay? So we so this 1440, okay, let me mark it clearly. So it would be done by 100 XOO minus okay, 9360. So this would be the most difficult part in this question. And then uh you know, okay, if, uh, I would say, um, your teacher will talk about this one, okay? So this one is in the chapter called com Incomplete Records, okay? Incomplete Records. So usually, okay, um, we have to find out the gross profit, okay? And then cost of sales, and then we have to do it, okay, reversely to find out the missing figures. For question 5C, okay, um, it talks about the advantages and disadvantages of doing uh, the full set of accounting. Um, usually students can do it. Okay, the first uh, common argument given by students is about the accuracy of the figures. Okay, um, that means okay, whether your accounting, okay, the report is accurate. Um, the second point uh, usually students will talk about is about the, f uh, the errors. Okay, would, would there be any errors? Okay, if you prepare the full set of accounting, then okay, then there may be less error okay, in your book. Um, for the disadvantages, um, a lot of students talk about the time, okay? So they may not have the time to do the bookkeeping, okay? The time include uh, learning the double entry, learning the double entry. So you may combine these points okay, into one to answer the question. Um, the, second, um, the second point okay, usually students give is about the cost, okay? So time is one of the disadvantages, the time cost. The second one, this one, what about the money cost, okay? like you have to hire an accountant or clerk, okay, to do it, okay. So this one, okay, will be the answers for uh, 5C. Now for, for Part D, okay, for Part D, okay, so uh, candidates, you have to um, take a look, okay, the book of prime entries, okay, the book of prime entry. Um, the first point, okay, so uh, you may put an uh, you may put a, uh, asterisk here, as there are a lot of students, they make it wrong, okay. So when we talk about the scan receipt, okay, it will go to the free column cash book. The free column cash book, okay. Um, in the free column cash book, okay, um, you know, um, both the scan received and the scan allowed uh, will be recorded. So bear in mind, okay, this one is recorded in the cash book, but not, not the purchase journal. Um, for the second point, okay, it's about the credit note, right? The credit note. So the credit note is for the returns outwards. So the answer would go to here, right? Okay, it would be recorded in the purchase journal, okay. For the last item, um, it's about the uh, direct, de uh, direct, you know, direct debit, okay. For direct debit, okay, that means there will be increase in the cash balance of the bank accounts, okay. 
So uh, for direct debit, okay, that means the supplier will put money, okay, to your bank account directly, okay. So um, it would be about debit bank, right? Debit bank. So the answer would go to the cash book, okay? Debit bank, okay? So this is the answers for part D. Now for part E, okay, um, so the assessment would be about the accounting objective. Um, so this topic is usually omitted by students, but I would like to remind you this one is included in the last part of the syllabus and usually um, it will appear in both uh, paper one and paper two. Um, so let's take a look at each one. For this one, comparability, okay, so you really drop down some notes. For comparability, it's about to compare with other companies, okay, with other, other companies or competitors. Other companies or competitors. Now for relevancies, okay, that means okay, whether it is related, related, like um, decision making, okay, is it related to our decision making? Um, for the reliability, so the, for the reliability, um, it would be about whether the figures are they accurate or okay, are there any errors in the accounting book? So we can make use of these and then we can fill the table. Um, for the first item, it talks about error, okay? So there should be no error, okay, in the accounting, okay? So the accounting objective should be the last one, okay? It's about the reliability. So one mark, okay? For the second item, okay, it's about the, for the decision making. For the decision making. So um, the answer will go to relevance. So that's it for the question five.